Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Jim Johnson to the show, owner, president, Johnson Home Contracting. There are leaders in our community, in our little planet, everybody, and then there are leaders. And uh, we can talk a little bit more about that as we go on here, but Jim does a lot of great stuff to really contribute to our community from all aspects. And I mean, we just had a great little conversation about life. And so that's what it's about on this little planet, helping people, making the world a better place, contributing and then helping others to get themselves on track a little bit, right? And that's what we have to do sometimes. So Jim's gonna share with us some of his expertise and excitement and uh, talk a little bit about what he does. With that, I wanna go back to our wide angle camera here. You can see all our sponsors on the show here. Um, your Little Castle, because you like nice things in Your Little Castle. So we wanna always give a shout out to our sponsors there. Carroll House Furniture recently ran into Brooke again. He's been a huge, Awesome sponsor. He and his, his sister there really love what we do. You got to have nice things in your castle, everybody. And then, of course, uh, USA Mortgage. I am a licensed MLO mortgage loan officer. We knew that that was something that would help facilitate all of what I work on because I've worked up for years helping mortgage companies in particular get the word out and do what they do. And so we tied that together. And now we're helping the people who build the houses, the places we live, and everything tied to that. So that's why we need to have you on here today, Jim. Well, Cabo, I, I really appreciate you having me on today. Well, thank you so. for, for being here. With that, let's put up on uh, on the walls here for everybody. We've got our TV wall to the left side that you guys are looking at and, and another TV wall on the right. And uh, get to show off Jim's new website and his Facebook. And we'll dig into this a little bit. And uh, I've always got a, a, a predetermined list of things I want to talk about. <laughs> but we might go off, off, off the path a little bit as we continue talking about things because uh, Jim has a great perspective on life here, and it's really cool. So tell me, why did you decide to get into the home remodeling, kitchens, baths, decks? You do a little bit of everything, and you do it well. Some dynamite pictures we're going to show everybody here, too. Uh, funny story. I uh, go into college, um, you know, because back then, I mean, everybody says, you got to go to college, you got to go to college. Uh, you know, I was like, you know what? What is the easiest degree that I can get into? And construction is, is what it was, you okay. know, uh, got into it. I started doing a little bit on the side, you know, things at home, uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, and then, you know, it just kind of took off from there. Um, I mean, that's how I truly honestly got into it. Um, uh, and then working my, my cousin, she has a roofing company and I went to work for her for a few years. Um, and I just fell in love with it. I mean, it's something different every day. That's for sure, because you're honestly literally putting your hands together to make to build something tangible to people. And what's the most I started answering, like, why is real estate such a big deal? Because everybody has to have a place to live. Yes. And especially nowadays in America, we've done pretty well in this little country. The the uh, they talk about if you if you're getting off on one of my weird tangents, but you go back 300, 500 years, there was the kings and then everybody else lived as peasants. Right. And in America. You work hard, you can develop a nice little house. You don't have to have a $5 million house, but you can have a $300,000 house or $150,000 house and decorate it and, and remodel it and make it look dynamite. And that's what gentlemen like you get to do. And that's, that's why I saw some of your work and I started looking at, at the stuff you've done. I'm like, holy bejizo, you have really put together some awesome looking stuff. And we're like, again, we'll share that with everybody here a little bit. First, I'm going to ask you a couple. So the path, you talked a little bit about that and then where that path is now, you, 17 years experience of your in the industry and you've got almost four years now of your own business is this this is where it is for you you get to do it all yeah um you know it's it's my wife um and, and i love her to death um i i was working a nine to five and then i would do the construction on the side and on the weekends um well covid hit and my wife convinced me she goes you should you should do this on your own i think you can do this i think you'll be very successful at this um and I, and I really contemplated, you know, for, for about three months. Um, and I finally just said, you know what? I mean, what's the worst that could happen? I have to go back to my nine to five job and the rest is history. So I left my nine to five and I have not looked back and I don't think I could ever go back to a nine to five. Well, with that, I got to say, give me some knuckles for the <laughs> saying goodbye to the nine to five. I, I worked in corporate America myself for 10 years and they had me this little cubicle about this big, about this big. <laughs> and like, just to wind up, you can almost reach the extents of my arms here on this, with my tight shot we've got here, camera number four. But uh, if I was out of that cubicle for more than an hour during lunch, or if I was five minutes late, or if I left five minutes early, I'm like, this is not the way life is supposed to be. 
So yeah. now you've really decided to take that leap, like a lot of us do, and, and, and really have some success with it. That's, that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Okay. What, what is a, per, give me a little background here. What, what would you say is a hobby you have? What was it that developed this, this uh, information you have for doing this kind of work? To have hands-on building, constructing, making the beautiful work. We'll show everybody. Um, well, I mean, I mean, I enjoy working with my hands. Uh, my wife calls me a workaholic. I call it having fun. Okay. Uh, you know, so I, I mean, to me, it's just I enjoy working with my hands. I enjoy doing something different every day. Um, it's not through the same routine, you know, day in and day out. So um, I don't, I mean, some people might call it work. I call it a hobby. So, I mean, <laughs> for me, I mean, that's just what I call it. So, well, they say do what you love and you will never work a day in your life, right? Well, that's what I try to tell my son. If you enjoy what you do, it's not work. When you hate what you do, then it becomes work. Right. And that's, that's uh, back to then. What did God put us on us on the planet to do? And uh, find something that you can have that kind of passion and enjoy and, and share what you love and, and make progress out of it to help other people. So 17 years personally, four years at owning your own company almost now. And, you know, what is it about your business that really fuels your passion? Ron? I mean, is it the finished product? Is it just having the autonomy to do well, what you Well, you know, it's, it's, it's the biggest thing for me is, is being able to turn something that people just dread looking at, just dread even trying to tackle themselves and then basically transforming that into something, you know, that they just can't stop looking at or they can't you know, tell their friends, oh my gosh, look what this has happened. This is actually has come true. Um, I mean, that's the biggest enjoyment for me, you know. Um, that's what I enjoy out of it, you know. Now, I'm not going to say that every project that we ever touch is all, you know, ice cream and, and Fruit Loops by any means. I mean, sometimes it's like, why did I take on this job, you know. But, I mean, that's just the way it is. Sure. Well, that's right. I, I, I'll go along with you. I mean, I'll uh, yesterday... Uh, had a little extra time to, and I just got tired of you get to really take this to the next level That's what I'm my, kind of my point here yesterday I'm, I'm looking at my kitchen. I'm like there's just stuff here. that needs to be put away and some of it's mine Most of it is not but I have a wonderful significant of her. She's f super friendly and happy But she's had a, a number of big changes in her life And so we end up with some extra stuff some people that move to the next level And so I saw, thought this stuff. I love it. It's important stuff But we got to find a way to make it. so I even took the glass these beautiful vases and I just like we're gonna put them on top of everything because they're out of the way on the countertop. And after I got done, I'm like, that's the kitchen I want. Now, is it the kitchen I really could have if I got Jim to remodel everything for me? But uh, those are the kinds of things you get to allow people to have because they may have a nice little $200,000 house, $80,000 house, but you make that kitchen look dynamite. You make that dining room look dynamite. You make that family room, you make that outside, the deck, all the stuff you get to do. Boy, that's I get it now. That's where you get to say, I made that kingdom for that little yeah, Prince absolutely. Have their little house. Is that, that kind of what fuels it for you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Okay. I like that. Let's, that. That kind of summarizes it. All right. Um, you do a lot of work in the community. You also, we'll get into what you, what you do. Another note here, everybody. I've talked about this before we started the show. Any sp special promotions you do, and what, the one he hit on, I love. Because everybody knows I work with Little Patriots Embraced and Folds of Honor and uh, Schmitz with. Uh, uh, Jeremy Schmitz, Jared, Sch Jared Schmitz, make sure I say that right, and their organization, and uh, is it 13 Heroes? A great organization, but um, military. Uh, this little country probably wouldn't have all the support that it has if we didn't have a strong backing there to keep the world in order. It's kind of yeah, absolutely. So when you offer a 10%, wow, I was kind of surprised by that, 10% discount. For those yeah. who've served in the military. Tell me um, I mean, obviously, you know, I, I mean, I'm from O'Fallon, Illinois, so we have Scott Air Force Base. So um, military is big where I live. Uh, my grandfather, he is um, also retired military as well. Uh, and that's how we landed in the great city of O'Fallon. Uh, so any military customers that we do work for, uh, we do offer that 10% military discount um, for those customers, um, it, even retired or active. You know, so we do that for both. Well, that's cool because there's a lot of people that serve in our military and they deserve to be treated with exception and uh, giving them that. There's not too many businesses I know do 10%. That's really cool. Yeah. And uh, something when you're building a kitchen, that's a good chunk of change that you're giving up to help make the world a better place. So appreciate that. Well, I'm going to jump over to the, our websites and, and with them first being Facebook and then also being 
your reviews. So I'm going to go and put this on the wall. Jim, tell everybody a little bit about how did you earn the accreditation and the A-plus rating from your, uh, your reviews that you have from the Better Business Bureau? Well, with the, with the A-plus, with the Better Business Bureau, um, basically you have to be in good standing with customers. You know, you have to call when you say you're going to call. You have to show up when you say you're going to show up. You have to do the work that, you know, you say you're going to do. Um, and if you do all those things, I mean, your, your A-plus will stay in order, you know. Uh, pretty basic rules of life, really. I mean, if you just do what you say you're going to do. Absolutely. It, 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 you, you don't have to go elaborate much more than that because isn't that just a foundation of life? I said I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I, people, I've had a guy, I'll tell you a funny story. The guy says, you said you might come to my party and then you didn't show up. I'm mad at you. I said, I didn't say I was going to be there. I do what I say what I'm going to do. And I didn't commit to you. I said, I will try. And, <laughs> but just be honest with people and say, I will get that done or I won't because I'm going to count on you. And that just helps exude the, the positive business flow and get a good quality and therefore yeah. everybody can see that i'm putting it back up on the wall everybody a plus rating from the bbb number of reviews out there and and uh, check out overall what jim does here because he's got some great looking stuff now with that i'm going to switch over to your facebook page so it's going to be right up there on the screen you got a nice little following there you got a bunch of uh, people that enjoy it, and a bunch of good reviews here we'll show everybody a little bit too i was impressed by the work so i'm going to start well, clicking you. on some of these images here and look at the what you're doing here so this is a house that did not have Anything close to this kind of a overdrop, I guess. Or what do you call it? Over, uh, you call they, it? they uh, so in this house here, they did not have any kind of covered patio. Um, and this is what they were looking for. They wanted that, you know, the, the cedar open cathedral ceiling uh, to be able to hang out, you know, on their back patio by the pool um, and to be able to actually enjoy their patio without being, you know, sunburnt. So, <laughs> um, and you know, it, it was it was a fairly easy project, you know, nothing too over the top by any means. Um, we the, now we were in the, the drawing phases with the homeowner because, I mean, they were very specific on what they wanted done, uh, how they want to lay it out, you know. Um, but sometimes what you want and what you can do is two different things, you know, for the structure to be safe. Um, so, you know, and like I said, that's why we were with, with that customer for a couple of weeks through the drawing phases. And we finally came to an agreement on everything that we could do, you know, that's going to pass building codes and, and all the zoning codes. Um, and they just were absolutely in love with this. Uh, this was probably by far one of our more favorite projects to do. Uh, we don't do very many exposed cedar beams, um, like this project here only because of the sheer cost of it. I mean, cedar, cedar, cedar is very expensive, you know, to do. Um, but with us to be able to do this project here was probably one of one of our more fun projects to do. Well, that's when it stood out, and it looks like something you might have. Is that recently you've kind of? You've uh, yeah, we just finished that one uh, about a month and a half ago. Okay. So. Looks good. And uh, all kinds of great. There's the before I'll put up there for everybody. I believe that's that's without, that's that same place, but no cover right there. Cover the patio. Now, that outdoor kitchen, that is not our project. That right. is the homeowner's project. That's the husband's project. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I don't want anybody to think that we started and did not finish that because that was not us. That was actually the homeowner. Yeah, but that's that's before. I, yeah, I got you. Okay, <laughs> good looking stuff. Well, all right. Thank so you. let's let's talk a little bit more here about some of the pictures you've got. And I, as I look through here, everybody, take take a take a minute to look at Jim's Facebook page because there are, are so much good examples of his so many good examples of his work. And again, I'm I, I, I went through your Facebook entirely over here, but let's go down over here and uh, get to my. Well, it's actually a, bear with me, everybody. I got to see all photos. There we go. And this is where I start getting. So you've got some before and after here. Tell me what's going on over here. So this homeowner's house here, uh, this is their master bedroom here. Um, you can see the old wood floor. That was the size of their master bedroom. And you can see the addition that we put on the back side of the house. And then basically we added 10 feet deep and we went 20 feet, 25 feet wide on the back of their house to make a now essentially a master bedroom suite uh, with a big walk-in closet. Um, the and you can see the finished photos there that's it okay. um that is it so now their master bedroom is roughly 22 by uh, 19 i believe is what we ended up making it when it was all said and done oh, so it's overhanging out over uh it's not overhanging because we um on the back side of their garage we did foundation walls and they wanted storage on the back side of their garage 
Uh, they have a split for your home. So now they have under storage underneath their bedroom uh, now. So it doesn't overhang. It was a full addition onto the backside of the okay. house. They extended it to that part of the yep. room so they could take over and have more space. And that's a that's a big, big bedroom there by the time yeah. they got done with that. All right, let's take a look here at a couple more. I know uh, lots more good work because I, I actually looked at your website. Well, well, pretty good review of your website too with lots of stuff you've got there. So I'm going to skip forward here. Another angle for that same room is that a little bit yep, more. Yeah, that's the same one. And obviously, you see the the, the bathroom there, and then they're walk-in closets through their bathroom now. And that barn door, your sliding barn door. Mm -hmm. I've got that here for our studio. It makes it easy to get in and yes. out. I have a swing a big door, and some of the work related to that. I'm just going to click through here because. And is this how you extended it to? Yep, that right there. That's the extension there. And obviously, because it's a split for your uh, the bottom half there, that's their um, storage on the back side of their garage now. So she was she's very big into Christmas. So she goes, I got to have Jim. I got to have plenty of room for all my Christmas decorations. Uh, the husband didn't care. He goes, as long as I can get my cars back in my garage, that's all I care about. <laughs> so make the customer happy. Yes. Very good. All right. And then additional work, as you see here. Now, a couple, I'm going to click through a few of these because I, I wanted to show you some of the ones I, that brought attention that I thought were, were, were very cool. But uh, if we take a look here, this one looked good. Another good looking one. I'm not skipping anything, everybody. We're showing you everything. Tell me how you take a bathroom and make it into looking like something like this. This, the, These finished works here, these are pretty powerful. Tell me this how was a, uh, This one was a fun one. Uh, this house here was in Fairview Heights. Um, we had a couple that was moving from St. Louis. Um, and they wanted a forever home because it had acreage, it had a lake. Um, and this house here was in really, really rough shape. So we actually um, had an architect come in, basically redraw this house and we stripped this house all the way down to the bare studs. Um, we wired the whole house, replumbed the whole house uh, and basically redid this whole house to the customer's likings. Um, with our bathrooms, they were very specific on what they wanted. Um, the kitchen, very, very specific. She, she was just, that was the one thing that she really cared about more than anything. She didn't care about the bathrooms. The husband cared about the bathrooms. The wife cared about the kitchen. Um, but this one was a very fun job to do a very long job. Um, I think this job for us start to finish roughly about four and a half months. Um, fun project, uh, not the most enjoyable project to do. Uh, a lot of hurdles on this one. Um, when you're basically stripping a house all the way down to the studs and, you know, going from there. So lots of good stuff there. All right. Well, let me, let me fast forward here. We're going to go to a couple more slides. And as we get into, um, when you really get into the depth, is, there's a whole lot of work that goes into these things. Yes. Uh, what does the average job take you to complete? I guess it ranges depending on all the needs um, of the customer. Well, yeah, I mean, it just depends on the complexity of the job. It depends on how big the job is. Um, a deck on average for us, if we're starting from scratch uh, with all of your, your inspections, uh, start to finish roughly is about two weeks. Um, you know, kitchens, uh, depending on what kind of top they're going with, if they're going with a stone or if they're going with a Vermica, kitchens on average last about three weeks. Um, and that's with going with the stone top because you have lead time, wait time, you know, on the stone because stone is is custom ordered per kitchen. It's not something you just go out to Home Depot and buy. It just don't work like that. Um, bathrooms are, are average about two weeks, you know, when, especially when you get into tile work because tile work is very consuming uh, to do it right. I mean, it, it takes time. So that's well, on average. Yeah. Take a look here on the on the wall for us again, everybody. Another kitchen here. Are you doing floors, tiles, appliances, cabinets? This actually is that all. same exact house in Fairview. So on the other side of that wall there where the washer and dryer is, that's their master bedroom. This is just their breakfast bar, their okay. coffee bar. Okay. So this is not even the kitchen. Gotcha. Oh, okay. So they've got a separate kitchen from this. Gotcha. Yes. And as you continue, this is some of the work as it went. And uh, t this one was impressive to me. Tell me what's going on here. This, this is the kitchen in front of you. So in okay. the doorway to the right there, that's where their coffee bar is. This is their kitchen. Now, when this house, when we first walked into this house, where this hanging light is, that was actually their kitchen. And where their kitchen is, that was a bedroom. So we actually blew all the walls out. And wow. then they wanted one big open um, floor plan um, with their kitchen dining room. So... 
Uh, that one, you know, it, that big beam there, you know, trying to put in headers, um, you know, to be able to catch all that support weight. I mean, that does take time, temporary walls, you know, and doing it right so it don't fall down on you. <laughs> you know, that's Important. the biggest thing. Important. Okay. Good stuff. Well, um, we got a lot more work we could show here with everybody. I do want to get a couple more of these pictures in because there was a, I mean, and check it out. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Is, there's, well, look, let me go back to that one. I'm going to put that book up on the wall for everybody. Is this the tear out? Is this what you're, what people are looking at and going, okay. So where I was standing in that back corner by the front door looking in the other way, but yeah, that's where the kitchen was. Okay. So and you can see the arch doorway and all those walls are gone now. All that saw fit. Um, yeah, needless to say, it was a it was a fun project. <laughs> there was days that I was ready to just pack up my truck and never come back. You know? <laughs> um, but you know, you, you take the bad with the good. So that's important. Uh, and every, life is full of hurdles. That's what we talk about. Is a another baseball one I'll throw at everybody. You've heard this one. It's not the error that causes you to lose the game. It's how you respond to that error, right? Yes. And, and overcome that. I, I always highlight my Cubby friends, but they close to win or go into the World Series. I think. And then the, one of their fans got in the way. I won't say his name because he had to move out of Chicago. And then they fell apart. That wasn't the last play of the game. They could have come back from that. Got to bounce back and go through. Life is full of hurdles. Yes. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go here too. All right. Well, on that, I'm going to put behind on the wall. Now we do have your website up. Good looking website. Direct to the point. Shows off a lot of your work. But that's your phone number there. 618-772-9889. Yeah, that's, that's my personal cell. That's the easiest way to get a hold of me. Uh, my phone is, is attached to me at all times. And of course, this when you look at some of this work, you go through all of what you guys have to offer. You really cover the whole gamut and uh, can get everybody just about anything they need with regard to putting that house together and uh, making a, a great, beautiful place for people to live. Yeah. And, and that's what we're really trying to highlight. Here's the people that can do this and share some of their tips with how they made their success so other people can learn from that too. And it sounds like you've been through that a lot as well. All right. Well, what do you? What would you say then, if you had to answer the question? We pregame prepped a little bit. We have a green room. We have our. We we chat a little bit before you. What would you say really sets your you guys apart? I think I've got a few ideas here, but tell me a little um, bit more of your thoughts. One of the things that that sets us apart, um, it's the attention to detail and the communication. That's what sets us apart. Uh, communication is the biggest thing. Uh, I am a firm believer you can never over communicate with anybody. Um, you know, that's the biggest key. Uh, and the second thing is the attention to detail, whether it's, you know, cleaning the job site up every day before you leave, um, putting the plastic down or the carpet protector down before you even start the job. Um, it's the little things that do make the difference. So attention to detail, everybody, if you're going to do anything right, that you've got to communicate well, because even if you got all the detail, looking great if you didn't do what they wanted the communication was broken uh, you didn't show up when you said you were going to show up or you know and, and and things do happen on jobs i mean um today we were working on a deck well we got rained out so you communicate with the homeowner hey we're not going to be there today we'll be there tomorrow um if you don't communicate you know um assumption happens and everybody knows what assume means <laughs> i don't think i have to spell that yeah, out we, I, we might get bleeped if we have to do that yeah way. but you it's, know. It's, it makes everybody look bad isn't yes it? absolutely <laughs> you know so i mean communication is the biggest thing and 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 that is attention to detail so that that's that's a key all right so i'm gonna throw up on the wall here one more time look at this work that jim did <laughs> Um, this is, is this another angle? What, what piece this is, is the same kitchen there in Fairview Heights. Okay, this uh, is, this is just a zoom in. Um, yeah, it's just, this one's a really fun one because I mean, this used to be a bedroom. Um, really? Yeah. So where the refrigerator is, was the doorway to the bedroom. Okay. So, um, a very tiny bedroom at that. So. Wow. The, uh, renovations you can do to completely change the, the, the entire layout of a house. If you, if you. No, if you've got the skills and determination to do it. Uh, it, the skills is the biggest thing, you know, I mean, not everything is practical, um, you know, uh, and the, the, the kind of the running joke that I tell my customers, I can pretty much do about whatever you want. It's really going to depend on how deep your checkbook is on what you want done. You know, I can do whatever you want, but how much money do you have to get what you want done? That's the biggest thing. Sure. So, so stay within the means. And then have you found you've been able to accommodate people? If they, yes. I don't 
I really want that, but I, I would settle for this based on the fact that it's going to cost more than I want. You want to do it right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and when I go into customers, I mean, I already know what their expectation is, you know, and and I, I, I never ask the question, well, how much are you looking to spend? I always ask the question, well, what are you looking to do? And then once we establish what they're looking to do, then I can give them, you know, a good, better, best kind of option, you know, and that kind of puts them kind of be easy at mind, really, um, to say, okay, well, you know, he's going to give me several options. So then I know kind of where I'm going to fall at in this budget, you know, and I, I never ask a customer, well, what's your budget? You know, because I mean, that to me, that comes off as being as, as a pushy used car salesman. That's the first thing I think of. So that's why I Nobody say- Nobody likes that. Yeah, and that's why I always ask, well, what would you like to do? You know, what is, what is your vision? And then I can tell you, okay, well, this is feasible. If you do this, um, then this may cost this much if you want to do this. This is kind of high end and this is the middle road and this is the low road. Now you brought so. that up. I'm like, that's when you're talking about serving our community. That's when we put on the Cardinal Cowboy hat because those, and Jim's been talking about stuff that helps the community the whole time here. I should have put the hat on sooner, but take note, everybody. I, I sometimes forget to use our pencil. Take note, do the things that impact, find out what their real needs are before you say, hey, here's what I can make and how can I do That's just, again, you're putting your own interests ahead of the consumers and that doesn't work out. Jim doesn't do it that way. And that's why it contributes to your success. Yes. Take note, everybody. All right, we're getting close to our first half hour. We do uh, record usually two half hours and I've got one important question. What's a mistake? that the average consumer makes. And we'll start on it here because we got about 30 seconds left on this show. And then we might, we want you to go watch the second show because he's gonna continue talking about it on the second show. Big mistake people make when they're gonna do this kind of remodeling job. Eager to get their checkbook out and hand money over. Really? Yes. Okay. Um, we, we run into it a lot um, where homeowners are just eager just to, do you need half down today? A good legitimate contractor does not have to have money up front because most contractors are going to be, you know, 60, 90 days out. With my customers, the way I do my customers is there's no money up front. A week prior to us starting, we'd go over final details. And then at that point, I take a third down at that point, a week prior to us starting. When I do the initial inspection or the initial consultation with my customers, uh, and we sign contracts, uh, there's never any money ever taken down up front, ever. So that's the biggest thing I can do. And I'm not saying that every contractor is a bad contractor because they're not. But it only takes one to spoil it for everybody. There it is, everybody. That's the end of our first half hour here with Jim. Stay tuned for more. We'll be back. Giddy up. <laughs>